Hey, what's up everybody? This is Dr. Andrew Kim, MD, and today's video is called Fall Asleep Faster, White Noise Machines. Do they really work? By the end of this video, we will have gone over five questions about white noise machines to help you decide if this is something you want to try to help you fall asleep faster. So let's jump right into it. Question number one, what is white noise? Now look, if you go on YouTube and type in the term white noise, you will be bombarded with tons of videos with endless sounds of raindrops and waves crashing on the beach, which are very soothing. But soothing sounds are not actually white noise. White noise is defined as a type of noise that covers all the different frequencies that the human ear can hear, played in random order at the same amplitude. So what does that translate to? It translates to a sound that sounds like shh, like a TV or radio static, kind of like this. So question number two, what is the theory behind how white noise works or helps you fall asleep faster? Well, the theory is this. Uh, the theory is that as humans, we are sensitive to changes in the consistency of sound. So when you are trying to go to bed and there's a sudden change like a door slamming, your brain, your ears and your brain notice this and may make you more alert, wake up uh, or disrupt your sleep. So like I said, white noise, we went over the definition, is a type of sound that covers every frequency. So it's kind of like you have a blanket of sound or a layer of sound that's there covering all the different frequencies so that when a different sound happens, it's less of a change to your ears. So you are less likely to get disturbed by it or wake up. So that's the theory and how it might work, okay? Question number three, is there actual evidence or research to support the use of white noise or white noise machines to help you fall asleep? The answer is yes, but, so yes, but. Yes, there is evidence, and there, this has been studied for decades, but the evidence is very limited. So what do I mean by that? Most of the studies that have been done are very small. Studies with 20 people here, 50 people there, 100 people there, and most of these studies, honestly, were not well-designed or well-controlled studies. They were kind of pseudo, uh, experimental, kind of pseudo uh, well-controlled. So uh, not the best quality studies and not the largest size. Now, a lot of people, you know, cite one of these studies that was done in 2017 as one of their main kind of sources of evidence. In 2017, there was a study that was published about 20 people who were hospitalized uh, in a hospital setting one group didn't get exposed to white noise, the other received uh, white noise sounds through speakers in their room, and they compared the two groups. The group that was exposed to white noise fell into a deeper state of sleep about 38% faster than the other group. Now again, this was 20 people, but most of the studies out there are kind of like this, very small in nature. So again, in summary, there is real research out there, but again, it's limited evidence. So question number four, are there any controversies uh, surrounding the benefits of using white noise to help you fall asleep? And the answer is yes. So one of the controversies or criticisms is people will argue that um, the science um, is somewhat flaky behind white noise and that people who swear by it may it may simply be a fact that they've conditioned themselves to use white noise to fall asleep. So basically their argument is, you've just kind of made this a part of your sleep ritual and you've kind of conditioned yourself that this is something that I find soothing, so I use it each night to help me fall asleep. They also argue that folks who seek out uh, sound machines or white noise machines are motivated people. These are people who've said, I think I have a problem, I'm gonna go address it, I'm gonna research it and work on it. And you know, the white noise machine itself is just kind of one tool they're using, but they're likely uh, using other methods like reducing their caffeine intake, working on their schedule, 
And by chance, the white noise machine was just part of that formula. And again, it's just another form of conditioning, basically. Uh, the other kind of controversy is about white noise itself. There are other color spectrums of noise. There's pink noise, brown noise, for example. And, you know, research has shown and suggested that pink and brown noise is actually a little less harsh on the ears and people find pink and brown noise more soothing. And in reality, a lot of the sound machines out there that market themselves as white noise machines are actually pink and brown noise machines because companies and manufacturers have already realized years ago that these sounds are less harsh on your ears and more soothing than white noise. So the reality is uh, white noise itself may not even be the best color noise to use to fall asleep. The jury is still out, but that's another fact. Question number five, are there any downsides or potential risks of using these types of sound machines? And the answer is yes, there are some potential risks, limited, but there are some. One of them may be there is some evidence that if you use them all night, there is some evidence to suggest you may end up waking up more often. So some people highly suggest using a timer to make sure it's not playing throughout the whole night. The other concern is about just chronic exposure of your ears to sounds all night, in particular for children and babies. So the American Academy of Pediatrics suggests that for children and infants uh, that you keep the sound machine at 50 decibels or lower and you keep it about six and a half feet or farther away from the child or baby. So these are just some potential downsides or concerns about using these types of machines. So in summary, now that we've gone over all these facts, do I uh, recommend or what are my thoughts on the use of sound machines? Now look, um, my personal thoughts are everyone is different, okay? And everyone will probably require a uh, different uh, series of steps to help them fall asleep faster. I think the evidence is limited uh, but the downsides are also limited as well. So I think as long as you don't go crazy breaking the bank and spending a ton of money and you take some of the precautions that we mentioned, uh, that it's reasonable to give it a try, okay? So here are a few tips if you're gonna decide to use one of these. Step number one, don't spend a ton of money. Like I said, uh, there are reasonable, affordable options and given the fact that the evidence is limited, you don't wanna go too crazy spending a ton of money. Uh, tip number two, like I said, uh, try to keep the volume lower if possible, and especially for children and babies, follow those guidelines uh, made by the American Academy of Pediatrics. Tip number three, uh, make sure you get one with a timer. Most of them have them, but look, some of them don't, but I'd recommend a timer just in case that research is correct, that maybe there's a chance it might wake you up in the middle of the night if you play it all night. So set the timer for whatever, 45 minutes, an hour, hour and a half, and have it shut off by itself, okay? Uh, tip number four, make sure the machine or app you're using is actually a white, pink, or brown noise machine. Because like I said, soothing sounds aren't necessarily white noise or pink noise, okay? Soothing sounds, by themselves don't equal those types of sound spectrums. Um, so if you're gonna do this, you might as well go with uh, the type of sounds that have some evidence behind it, all right? And finally, tip number five, just because you use a white noise or sound machine, don't ignore other sleep hygiene tips, okay? So things like reducing your caffeine intake, getting on a regular schedule, exercising during the day. If you're not familiar with basic sleep hygiene tips, Make sure you watch my sleep hygiene video and educate yourself on that as well. So I hope you found this video helpful and you've learned a little something new about white noise and sound machines. This is Dr. Andrew Kim. I hope you guys are doing well. Hope you guys can get a better night of sleep and we will continue pumping out videos about how to fall asleep faster and how to get healthier sleep. Dr. Andrew Kim, signing off. Until next time.